Mr. Chairman, uh, this kind of leads me into talking about the different organizations, Muslim organizations here in the United States that are working against our Constitution and the American people. Um, my next presenter will be Chris Gobitz. Um, he has quite the um, um, background and experience. Uh, he's also written a book called The Muslim Mafia. Uh, he's currently a security consultant at Understanding the Threat. Um, he was also an undercover agent inside of CARE, or the Council of American Islamic Relations, for a year or so. So I'd like to segue into that and uh, turn it over to uh, Mr. Gobitz. You're recognized. Thank, <clears throat> thank you. And uh, just to clarify, I actually didn't write the book, but it was about my experience. <clears throat> so um, I am the Vice President of Understanding the Threat, or UTT. And UTT is the only organization in America which is briefing leadership at the national, state, and local levels on the severity and dangers of the jihadi network here, providing training to law enforcement, detailing the strategies and modus operandi of the jihadis, terrorists, while providing specific investigative guidance showing them how to locate and prosecute terrorists, both organizations and individuals, and working at the state level to create strategies to dismantle these networks. Universally, the enemy, jihadis, whether they are the Islamic State, Al-Qaeda, or the Muslim Brotherhood, all state that they are Muslims waging jihad in the cause of Allah to establish an Islamic State under Sharia. Now, I'm going to discuss one jihadi group today, the Muslim Brotherhood, based on evidence entered into the largest terrorism and Hamas trial ever successfully prosecuted in U.S. history, the Holy Land Foundation trial, and based on my experience conducting undercover research with Hamas doing business as care, the Council on American Islamic Relations. The Holy Land Foundation trial was adjudicated in Dallas, Texas in 2008 and identified CARE as Hamas, which is a designated foreign terrorist organization. The U.S. government identified Hamas as an outgrowth of the Muslim Brotherhood. Documents entered into evidence in the Holy Land Foundation trial also revealed that ISNA, the Islamic Society of North America, is a Muslim Brotherhood organization. The Islamic Society of Greater Oklahoma City is a subsidiary of ISNA. The Imam of the Islamic Society of Greater Oklahoma City is an advisory board member of Hamas doing business as CARE and has received an award from Hamas, the CARE Inspiration Award. At the time it was indicted, the Holy Land Foundation was the largest Islamic charity in the U.S. and was convicted on 108 counts for funneling over $12 million to a foreign terrorist organization, Hamas, which is the Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. <clears throat> the Muslim Brotherhood Creed states, Allah is our goal, the Prophet is our guide, the Quran is our constitution, Jihad is our way, and death for the glory of Allah is our greatest ambition. The Muslim Brotherhood bylaws state that the Islamic nation must be fully prepared to fight the tyrants and the enemies of Allah as a prelude to establishing the Islamic State. Again, the Muslim Brotherhood agenda is no different than that of Al-Qaeda or the Islamic State, which is to establish an Islamic, uh, global Islamic State under Sharia. The Muslim Brotherhood logo has two swords cradling a Quran with a reference to Ayah or verse 860 of the Quran, which states, against them, makes, against them make ready your strength to the utmost of your power, including steeds of war, to strike terror into the hearts of the enemies of Allah and your enemies. This verse is also referenced in the Al-Qaeda training manual, which was discovered in May 2000 by British investigators conducting a search of Al-Qaeda operative in Asalibi. During my time conducting undercover research as an intern for Hamas, both at CARE in Maryland, Virginia and Herndon, Virginia, and CARE National in Washington, D.C., I preserved over 12,000 documents, some of which revealed that Hamas doing business as CARE conspired to cover up fraud committed by one of their immigration attorneys, discuss coordinating with bin Laden and his associates, play staffers and interns inside congressional offices, and conspire to influence Congress, specifically Judiciary, Intelligence, and Homeland Security Committees. Impacted, impacted, uh, they worked to impact congressional districts and tasked each Hamas chapter office with influencing at least two legislators. Ordered books from the Saudi Embassy on the virtue of jihad and martyrdom, 
worked with a Muslim law enforcement officer to influence a major terrorism investigation by accessing a classified federal police database and tipping off the suspect. During the course of this project, I worked directly with Hamas leaders Nihad Awad and Ibrahim Hooper, and both of whom are jihadis who actively work political influence operations on Capitol Hill. They also worked directly with the media to define the narrative in the information warfare space and the U.S. national security apparatus, state and local government, and law enforcement agencies need to expand their understanding of jihad. The global Islamic movement generally, and jihadis like Hamas doing business as care specifically, see jihad as total warfare. Per Islamic law, to include lawfare, propaganda, media, political influence, intelligence gathering, and counterintelligence, as well as kinetic warfare. Since 9-11, our national security apparatus and state and local law enforcement and government officials have largely viewed this war as kinetic only to the detriment of the citizens they have sworn to protect. I'd like to submit for the record the following uh, document titled Care is Hamas. It's a um, statement of fact that Care is a Hamas entity and this document, Care is Hamas, outlines over 20 statements of fact to support this claim. The facts are incontrovertible. Uh, CARE is Hamas. The following statements of fact support this. We don't have enough time to go into all this, so I'm just going to lay out a couple of those points. CARE was incorporated in 1994 by Nihad Awad and Omar Ahmed, all of whom were leaders of the Islamic Association of Palestine, a now defunct Hamas organization in the U.S. In 1993, the leaders of the U.S. Palestine Committee, Hamas, met in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The meeting was covered by the FBI via physical surveillance, microphones in meeting rooms, wiretaps on phones, etc. The FBI stated this was a meeting among senior leaders of Hamas, the Holy Land Foundation for Relief and Development, and the Islamic Association of Palestine. The FBI also stated that all attendees of this meeting are Hamas, and Nihad Awad and Omar Ahmed the founders of CARE were present at that meeting. Recorded conversations from FBI surveillance of this meeting captured Awad and Ahmed specifically discussing the creation of a new public relations organization for Hamas, which investigators testified uh, was CARE, created in 1994 following this meeting. In a 2004 FBI raid at Annadale, Virginia, residents of Ismail El Barassi, a senior Hamas and Muslim Brotherhood leader, the archives of the U.S. Muslim Brotherhood were discovered. One of the documents found listed the leaders of the U.S. Palestine Committee, Hamas, and on the list were the names of CARE founders Nihad Awad and Omar Ahmed with the alias Omar Yahya. Because of the overwhelming evidence that CARE is a Hamas entity, U.S. prosecutors list CARE as a member of the U.S. Muslim Brotherhood's Palestine Committee, Hamas, and as an unindicted co-conspirator in the U.S. versus Holy Land Foundation trial. In the government filing requesting CARE's motion to have its name removed from the unindicted, unindicted co-conspirator list in the uh, Holy Land Foundation case, U.S. prosecutors stated, quote, the U.S. Muslim Brotherhood created the U.S. Palestine Committee, which documents reflect was initially comprised of three organizations, the OLF, which is HLF, the IAP, and the UASR. CARE was later added to these organizations. The mandate of these organizations, per the International Muslim Brotherhood, was to support Hamas. The federal judge in this case, Jorge Solis, stated, the government has produced ample evidence to establish the associations of CARE, ISNA, and NATE with the HLF, the Islamic Association of Palestine, and with Hamas. FBI Assistant Director Steve Pomeranz stated, by masquerading as a mainstream public affairs organization, CARE has taken the lead in trying to mislead the public about the terrorist underpinnings of militant Islamic movements, in particular Hamas. The U.S. government prosecutors and the U.S. Department of Justice identify CARE as a member of the U.S. Muslim Brotherhood's Palestine Committee, which is Hamas in the United States. Hamas doing business as CARE. National and Washington, D.C. coordinates the operations and agenda of its Hamas chapters throughout the U.S., including CARE Oklahoma. The primary purpose of CARE National and all of its Hamas chapters in the U.S. is to conduct civilization jihad, 
to establish an Islamic State under Sharia. Again, CARE's goals are no different than Al-Qaeda or the uh, Islamic State to establish an Islamic State under Sharia. Documents entered into evidence in the Holy Land Foundation trial entitled an explanatory memorandum outline the role of the Muslim Brotherhood in North America. Quote, the process of settlement is a civilization jihadist process with all the word means. The Iqwan must understand that their work in America is a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying Western civilization from within and sabotaging its miserable house by their hands and the hands of the believers so that it is eliminated and God's religion is made victorious over all other religions." End quote. Anytime Oklahoma legislators meet with CARE Oklahoma, they are meeting with representatives from Hamas, a designated foreign terrorist organization. Anytime Oklahoma state and local law enforcement does outreach with CARE Oklahoma, they are doing outreach, outreach with representatives from Hamas, which, to reiterate, is a designated foreign terrorist organization. Anytime faith-based groups meet with CARE, they are meeting with Hamas representatives. It is critical that Oklahoma leaders, whether legislators or law enforcement, take the time to study the enemy threat doctrine, Sharia, and work to aggressively dismantle the jihadi network in your state. UTT is the only organization in America that is actively training law enforcement on how to investigate and dismantle the jihadi network. We're willing to help Oklahoma leaders in government, law enforcement, and, and at the citizen level to create a strategy to do just that. At the national level, DHS, DOJ, and the State Department have outsourced our national security to Muslim Brotherhood groups like CARE and ISNA. This constitutes gross negligence and in some cases arguably criminal negligence as they are enabling the goals of civilization jihad by our hands. Since leaders at the national level are not upholding their oath to uphold the Constitution and protect their citizens, I propose that Oklahoma leaders create a strategy to protect their citizens without waiting for federal agencies to do so. Again, UTT is here to help in any way we can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Govitz, thank you for coming today and thank you for um, all that you've done and the truth and facts that you've collected. We appreciate that. And we'll take that document and put it into our, um, um, our information for as far as this briefing is concerned. I have a question for you. Um, have you seen or are you aware of the Hamas care hit list for Islamophobes that was put out publicly on the Internet and had everyone that's, or the majority of folks that have openly spoke out against uh, the truth of Islam? and their threats towards those individuals? I have seen that list, yes, sir. Are you aware of any threats uh, on, to your life or others that might be on that list? Look, any time you are called an Islamophobe per Islamic law, uh, you are being accused of slander. And uh, so I take it a threat any time someone calls anyone an, uh, an Islamic, um, a jihadi calls anyone an Islamophobe, they're essentially calling for the Islamic law of slander on that person. So I take it as a threat any time a jihadi uses that term. You're pretty familiar with, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I? Uh, you're pretty familiar with um, Islam, the Quran, the Hadith. Um, as far as de the teachings of those books, um, do they try to convert you to Islam before they kill you? If you're speaking out against Islam, or do they just historically go after you as an Islamophobe? Yeah, so under, under Islamic law, um, essentially if you, are a, uh, if you are a Christian or Jew or Zoroastrian, a person of the book, then um, you either have, you have three choices. You can accept the call to da accept the Dawah and accept Islam, convert. You can feel yourself subdued and pay the jizya, which is a non-Muslim poll tax, or you can be killed. Uh, pagans only have two choices, convert or die. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and one last follow-up, Mr. Chair. Um, so when you were undercover in CARE, Council of American Islamic Relations, um, as you learned some of their, uh, their MO, do you consider them a probably one of the greatest threats to America in our U.S. Constitution? Absolutely. They're, they're, they are uh, what we term at UTT suit-wearing jihadis. You, when, you, when you see someone from CARE 
uh, you're seeing someone that is no different than Al Qaeda. You're seeing someone that is no different than the Islamic State. They have the same agenda. They have the same goals. They're willing to work together or they play off of each other to achieve those goals. Uh, the only difference is suits, ties, big smiles. They're still jihadis. They still want to subjugate the entire world under Sharia and Islamic law. Thank, sorry, Mr. Chair. One, one more. I just come to mind. So allowing CARE, ISNA, Nate, or these other organizations that have been factually proven to be tied to Hamas and other terrorist organizations and groups and acts. Um, do you think it would be fair to say allowing CARE to operate in the state of Oklahoma is about as ridiculous as allowing a Nazi to freely operate um, in Israel? Yeah, it, it, this, this makes absolute no sense. Look, there's enough evidence right now to dismantle the entire jihadi network. It's not, it's not a question of evidence. Uh, every single uh, care could be dismantled right now. They could be indicted right now. It's, it's not a lack of evidence. It's a lack of will. And um, it, could, it could be done tomorrow. If, 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 if people had the courage and the, the will to do it, then they could dismantle that network. I mean, when you let care operate openly and freely, you, again, you might as well be letting, letting an al-Qaeda office operate openly and freely. There, there's no difference between the two. The only difference is name. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any additional questions from members? Thank you very much.